Welcome to the Zero to Five Million Dollar Podcast. I'm Sean Finder, and I'm with my co-host Ollie Whitfield. This show is brought to you by AutoClose, a vanilla soft company. Ollie, why don't you? Uh, well, we don't have a guest today, but won't you uh, let the audience know what we're going to be talking about today? Yeah, well, clearly I picked the wrong career, wrong job, because I get to stay here at home and you get to go globe trotting. Who just thought it? So, uh, why don't you tell us about what you've been doing? And uh, there'll be, I'm sure, several questions that I have for you based on what you've been doing. Um, namely some business travel, some return on investment, or all those typical things that uh, that you might be asking me. So it's now my turn to ask you. Yeah, yeah, no, it's the uh, the great debate. So actually, this week uh, I was uh, in Las Vegas in at LeedsCon. Um, uh, so we went. I uh, flew out Sunday night. Uh, conference was Monday was more networking. Tuesday and Wednesday were the was the show, and flew back late last night. And then came this morning uh, bright and early to do this uh, podcast with you, Ollie. So it was uh, an interesting show for um, more B2C, but there are some B2B people there on uh, list building, um, on different sales engagement platforms, um, different tools and how to buy lists, sell lists, et cetera, uh, insurance brokers. So it was a, it was a good show. And uh, we went because uh, a lot of our larger clients are actually in that insurance space. So that's where I was, uh, and a little bit of blackjack this week. Uh, that, that's what I was I was doing, Ollie. Obviously, wouldn't be a Monday without some blackjack, would it, for you? So, um, first first thing first before we dig into it too much, what was the goal? So you said that a, a large group of clients was there, and some of the bigger clients that we have. So, is it a bit of a touching base? You know that type of goodwill stuff that's, going on over any like new leads and other things. That's a, that's a great question. So you know initially, uh, you know years ago. Before COVID, we actually used to sponsor and get a booth at this event every year at LeedsCon. Um, this year, um, one of our competitors, are the lead sponsor, and actually a few of our other competitors are there, but we actually decided not to get the booth simply because, um, you know, some of these, these conferences, you, you get ROIs and some you don't. So for us, um, what we wanted to do is really, A, most importantly, is visit our most important clients and, you know, network with them, get some face-to-face with them. Um, and then B was, you know, try and get some new business. Um, but one of our, one of our bigger clients has kind of, you know, different businesses within their business. Um, and meeting those people was very important, but I would say overall was, it was a networking event for us. Um, and we didn't, uh, we didn't have the booth. So it wasn't too much of a get an ROI on the booth, but more try and maintain, grow. So Let's take ROI out of it because it's not necessarily a tangible thing when you're talking about current clients. So there's a there's a cost of keeping them and so on, but let's let's take that out a little bit. Do you know roughly what was spent? So so namely who went and how many hotel rooms did we need and how many meals and taxis yeah. and Ubers um, and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, I would say overall eight thousand dollars, maybe eight to, uh, no, I would say ten thousand dollars for the entire event. We had two people uh, come. Uh, flights were expensive because uh, Vegas did have a, a construction conference um, out there with 300,000 people. Actually, it's the biggest conference of the year was also out there. March Madness for basketball is currently starting. So hotel rooms were busy. Um, and what we did was, and we'll talk about this in a little bit, we did uh, we did top golf. So what we did was we arranged a big top golf, got four bays at the top golf, um, drinks, food, and everything, and invited as many people as we can. Uh, well, not as many. We had up to 25 people we could invite. Um, so we invited some uh, existing clients, we invited some uh, prospects, and we invited some people that when we had a few seats left, uh, just on the way, we went to the uh, the pool party and just invited some other random people that might be potential clients, uh, come join us in Top Golf. And the pool party, who got the job of handing out those flyers? Uh, am I looking at him? <laughs> so yeah, he was definitely, um, <laughs> let's just say I, I am the um, the extrovert of the group. Uh, so I ended up. You know what uh, I'm thinking walked- of right now in the in entourage. I'm seeing Turtle and Johnny Drama at the pool party handing flies to every single person. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So we didn't hand. I actually just you know struck up a few conversations and it just my thing was, do you like golf? And they're like, yeah, yeah I do. I'm like, and then the crazy thing was at the MGM, the Top Golf's attached to the MGM, so it's not a walking. It was literally from the pool party. Thirty seconds, you're inside Top Golf. Right? right. So um, it was uh, it was great. Uh, we got a few people. We ended up getting out of our 25 spots. We filled about 21 spots um, um, and people were coming and going. It was it was great. We did have a lot of leftover uh, food and we probably didn't uh, use our entire um, budget for drinks. So um, too bad you weren't there, Ollie. Yeah, I was trying to make the case, but it's quite a long flight 
So three days, isn't it? But um, maybe next time. If I can stay a bit longer, that's the thing. But then I'm ramping up the hotel room costs. So beyond that, um, you, you've gone for networking and that kind of stuff. There's a lot of time that's spread out in a what well, is basically an eight-hour working day for networking. And the first day of an event before it really gets going and then before there's keynotes and all that kind of stuff. So how much did the team get away from everything and go meet somewhere else go talk about other things do that kind of stuff or was it pretty much the whole time you spent with another person which could be a client and that type of thing yeah so great question so you know on the first day was a networking thing and and strategically enough um one of our larger clients actually were all wearing the same knapsack so for me to walk around the three thousand people i actually just looked for the knapsack and as soon as i saw it i started jumping in conversations asking because i think you know this one client i'm not going to mention their name here but 80% 80% of them, I think, we're 75, 80% of them are with us. So there is still a 20% that we could we could attract the business. So anyone that had the knapsack with their logo on it, I actually went up to. Um, and, you know, we ended up finding a few prospects that are having just general conversations, what they like, what they dislike, what they're looking for, what can how can we help them, um, where they see it going in 2023 and different things like that. Um, so the first year was all kind of networking. And, and also, um, this was kind of a last minute thing for us. So um, we had to fill up those top golf. So I was I was running around the first day trying to fill up the the bays at Top Golf. We had uh, eight people that we confirmed the week before because we just got this idea a week before, and then I had to get about eight people that were our clients and some prospects um, right at the event on the Monday, right before we had the Top Golf at six thirty to eight thirty on Monday night. So that's how we did it on the first day. Um, there wasn't many talks on the first day. The exhibit was not open on the Monday, so it was really just kind of a networking, almost registration day. Um, and then on Tuesday, uh, that's when all the exhibitors opened up. And um, it was it was interesting to see a lot of uh, competitors, but also a few people that, you know, reach out to me with cold cold calls all the time, uh, reaching out to me to try and sell the business. They were all there. Um, a lot of the lead companies that try and sell auto clothes and vanilla soft leads. Gotcha. Okay. So uh, I haven't done too much business travel. It's mostly been London, which is an hour on the train. So it's, that's barely even travel. But I've been to uh, to Canada one time and then to Arizona one time. There wasn't really much opportunity to do anything too much apart from just get to the hotel and that's where we worked. So any like business travel hacks that you've got, like, you know, is the lounge worth it or, you know, ways you can save some cash and that type of stuff, ways you can make your trip a little bit easier? Yeah, I mean, to be honest, you know, if I had to do this event again, it was one of those events where you didn't even have to, the tickets were $2,000 to get in. And it was one of those events, I don't think you actually needed a ticket. You could have just done the networking event. If you booked enough meetings ahead of time um, for those other days, you know, that's where all the meetings were happening. All the meetings were happening outside of the exhibit hall, outside of the the the, the, um, the talk rooms. So I, I think that's one way. To, I actually think a few people were doing it because I didn't see any any um name tags on them and they were running around talking to people so i think that's one thing you could do especially in vegas because vegas is so busy as is so people aren't really looking to see if you're wearing your tag that would be one thing um but i also think you can do different things uh you know i saw one person at one of the booths dressed like austin powers you know so you can kind of dress up as different and people will just come up to you without even you approaching them so there's different techniques and little hacks you can do to make yourself stand out and not have to spend that twenty five, you know, fifty hundred thousand dollars on uh, on a booth. So next time you're going as Austin Powers, I, that I was is what I heard. You would actually be doing that, actually, Ollie. I think you're more the personality than me. What do you think? Potentially, potentially, potentially yeah. We can we can argue about that. I, I don't know if the <laughs> yeah, they're probably the costumes aren't probably that popular in my size. You're probably yeah, you'll be all right. Anything else of note? So what I wanted to talk about was actually, um, you know, the actual speakers. Um, you know, there's a big debate, you know, is it good to do that one-on-one speakers? Are those more educational than the debates that go on? And I found that, you know, some of the debates, um, it's almost like you have the sponsor that's up there for the debate. And he brings like two people there that are clients that are kind of doing the debate, but kind of promoting his own client, the sponsor's client on the stage. Uh, and I found that yeah, I found that yesterday. It was just it was very interesting because he kept bringing back oh how good the platform was, um, and how good the, the sales tool was, and how good it was, but nothing like educational or value added. It was just basically a promotion. Um, I also think some of them when they're you know they're thirty to forty five minutes, 
Um, by the time the people do their introduction, they do 10 minutes about themselves. They do their 10 minute pitch. They actually talk about 10 to 15 minutes of anything that's of value. Uh, those are a few, few things I noticed there. Um, there wasn't too many talks. I was more used to, you know, talks every hour. Like when I was at SAS North, like every hour on the hour, there was another speaker. I didn't feel like there was too many speakers there. Um, so those were some interesting things I noticed at the event. Uh, but um, overall, you know, as I said, I think it depends what you're going there for. I wish we would have, if we would have been a little bit more proactive and probably a few months before I actually knew we were attending, I would have booked a lot more meetings. But overall, um, I think Top Golf was our success because we brought a lot of people to one room. It was our show. Uh, we had, you know, driving range, food and drinks. We have those that social. So it was an hour and a half of just clients. And that really did work well. And I think it resonated well with our clients because we, we also got to build those r- rapport and that relationship with them. So no, like headliner speakers, no one of like super, super high caliber. It's mainly if you sponsor, you get to speak. No, they, they, um, a lot of them was like FCC and, uh, and other compliance speakers, which, which is not the most, you know, I guess, um, you great to listen it. to or fun to listen to. <laughs> kind of dry. But those were a lot of the speakers there that I found. Um, but overall, I mean, it was one of those things where, you know, we had to be there. We had to show face. It was great to do the one-on-ones. It was great to see our clients, um, see a few prospects. And, you know, also we have two product lines. So one of our larger clients on the auto close side was there, which is great because I probably would have had to do a separate trip there. So overall, very successful. Um, and then we have, uh, you know, a few big quotes going out. But besides that, um, I think, um, you know, I think it's, it's what we, we what we want to get out of it. We got out of it. Um, so the most important thing, saving it for last. Any big gambling losses? Any like clients out there on the top golf range or anything like that? So funny enough, one of our clients there, uh, we had uh, we, uh, we I like to gamble, so we had a little gamble, and it was um, he gets five percent off his bill versus he has to add a hundred more seats next month. Um, and it was the longest drive at Top Golf, and I ended up, I think, out driving by about 18, 18 yards. And he lived up to his words. And this morning, he actually, um, actually bought those hundred seats. So we got the hundred seats there. Uh, that was one of the things. And then we played a little blackjack after. Um, you know, I did pretty well that night. Um, I guess our other colleague did not. But uh, I ended up giving it all back the next night. So overall, uh, you know, doesn't matter if you win one. It, it matters when you go home with. And uh, let's just say I didn't go home with too much in my wallet. Oh, well, the house always wins is what I was always told. Vegas was not made on winners is what I say. Yeah, but <laughs> you had a good time, met some clients, met some prospects. And uh, if anything, seeing that deal come through this morning is, um, you know, we, we weren't talking about ROI, but that was a good something to audit. So. Perfect. Well, I want to uh, thank everyone for joining us today. Uh, this has been a, a different episode, but I hope you guys got value as we talk about the, the conference at LeadCon, um, some do's and don'ts, what we did. Um, so hope you enjoyed the show. Um, if you did, give us a five-star view wherever you're listening from and subscribe so you don't miss the next show. Thank you again, Ollie, and see everyone on the other side.